Hey, what's up? How you doing? It's your friend Phil here, project management trainer and coach. Welcome to 40 days to PMP and CAPM exam success. We have come to the close of our studying in that this is our final process day. Now we have one more day where we will talk about exam tips and tricks, but today is all about the final process group. So we're talking about the closing process group, folks. Think about how far you've come. You have covered 47, uh, 45 processes. By the end of today, it will be 47. My goodness. What a marathon. What a marathon event. Uh, you know, I congratulate you on coming this far. If you have truly followed all the days, or even three quarters of the days, I totally duff my hat to you. It's a huge accomplishment. Really, really huge. Today, we're going to be covering our last two processes that are in the closing process group. And these are close project or phase and close procurements. Close project or phase is the process that integrates all closure activities across the entire project. Whether you are closing out a phase in the project or the project as a whole, this is the process that helps you. And it's an integration. This is where you integrate all closure items. So the inputs to this process, first of all, you have project management plan, because remember all the processes in monitoring and controlling and closing use the project management plan as an input. You probably remember that. Also, we have as an input accepted deliverables. An accepted deliverable is a deliverable that has been accepted by the customer. And this is an output of the validate scope process. Now, as you get this accepted deliverable, what are you going to do with it? What is the customer going to do with it? What needs to happen next after acceptance? The next thing is a transition of that deliverable to the customer. And as you are transitioning this deliverable, bear in mind a lot of things could overlap and be happening. Training could be happening. Training the team that will take that building, if the deliverable is a building, take the building over. Maybe it's a vessel like a ship handing it over to the people who will be in the operations department, that also needs to happen in tandem. Handing over any pertinent documentation to help people run that deliverable. Maybe it's a software system, maybe it's a system of systems, whatever it is. This is where that transition takes place. And as a result, we have an output of closed project or phase, and this is called final product service or result transition in other words final deliverable transition so the deliverable has already been accepted by the customer by the stakeholders but this is where we transition it so the transitioning of deliverables is a big deal because you want to make sure that people have got the adequate training the adequate documentation so in the real world there may be a lot of things to check off on a final transition of a deliverable from the performing organization to the requesting organization we have the three that we're used to here expert judgment analytical techniques and meetings because as we're closing out this project or phase we need to in many instances meet with other stakeholders to make sure that indeed the project has been closed out. And one of the ways we analyze and we get assurance that the project should be closed out is through what we call analytical techniques. You're going to analyze to make sure that indeed closure has been attained and that the project 
can be closed out, lessons learned, documented, and all those final steps following through on whatever the, the processes are within the firm to close out the project. So that's closed project or phase. Also, very important output is organizational process assets updates. Now, people often refer to this as lessons learned casually, but there's more to OPA updates than lessons learned alone. Remember what organizational process assets are in the first place? Two big categories for OPAs are processes and procedures. And secondly, the corporate knowledge base. So processes and procedures for carrying out project work is part of OPAs and could be part of OPA updates if something has indeed changed or if templates have been updated this is where you would you know funnel these through OPA updates so processes and procedures and secondly the corporate knowledge base which will have your lessons learned from this project so for every project you work on folks to make it pragmatic document your lessons learned keep them in an archive and even beyond that, make sure that people know that they are being archived. Because a lot of companies, they do a religious lessons learned ceremony where they gather lessons learned, but no one knows where they are. Or people don't make use of them. So lessons learned, very important. People also refer to lessons learned as a post-mortem analysis. So the post-mortem analysis would look at why is the project being closed? Did the project fail? If so, why did the project fail? And going through all of those questions to understand what did we do well? What didn't we do so well? What could we have done better? These are your lessons learned, okay? Bear in mind, close project or, don't forget the or, or phase. So these approaches could be used to close out a project entirely or to close out a phase in the project. So we call it closed project or phase. You could have phases that follow the entire project management life cycle from phase to phase. So what do I mean by that? I'm talking about a phase in which you Think about initiating the phase, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling the phase, closing the phase, end of phase one. Phase two, initiate it, plan it, execute it. You see, you don't think about the five process groups only for entire projects. You could look at this as the project management life cycle that is followed for phases as well. So close project or phase all right so that is our final process in integration the next process to talk about is called close procurement now close procurement is all about closing out contracts agreements with vendors suppliers contractors subcontractors sellers whatever you want to call them this is where you would close out these contracts and procurements so to start with let's talk about the output what are we really trying to get out of the closed procurement process it's rather simple closed procurements you're trying to get to the point where you can close out that contract you can close out on that agreement because the deliverables that were promised in the contract or agreement have been delivered. So the inputs to this process, closed procurements, are, first of all, your project management plan, as usual. Remember, the project management plan is an input to all of those processes in monitoring and controlling and closing. Also remember, though, 
that the project management plan is an input to wherever a subsidiary plan is being developed. So plan scope management, plan schedule management, plan cost management, all the plan X management processes, where X is the knowledge area, all of those processes use the project management plan as an input in addition to those that I mentioned in monitoring and controlling and closing. So in closed procurement, we have the project management plan as an input. We have procurement documents as an input. And this refers to all manner of procurement documents on the project. Remember, we talked about this in plan procurement management and we mentioned the IFB and RFP and RFI and all of those associated documents we talked about then. Those are referred to as procurement documents as well as other documents that are not necessarily part of the project management plan. So those are the two inputs to close procurement. How do we work the process? How do we close procurement? Well, the first thing is a procurement audit. A procurement audit is an analysis of what went well on the procurement, what are the areas or opportunities for improvement, and if we could do this again, what would we do differently? What would we do the same? This is referred to as a procurement audit. Now, in a lot of firms, people just do an internal closure procedure of sorts. They don't involve external entities in closing out the project. PMI says, get people involved, you know, get, get your stakeholders. And of course, the sellers are stakeholders. So just bear that in mind, your sellers are stakeholders. Another tool and technique here is procurement negotiations. So this is where the final negotiations to settle any claims, to close out the project, or to close out the procurement on the project rather, uh, should occur. We also have a tool and technique known as records management system. We talked about the records management system earlier on in control procurement. And the records management system is used to store all manner of procurement management records, information, contracts. All of that information should be accessible in the records management system of your choice. So again, the major output of this process is called closed procurement. Remember though that as you're closing out the procurement, you should also have your lessons learned. So we talked about the procurement audit. As a result of your procurement audit, you should have organizational process assets updates. As you audit what went well, what didn't go so well on the project, that information should be documented and you should make sure that it's accessible, just like the lessons learned from all other areas of project management. And that, my friends, concludes our review of the PMBOK Guide 5th Edition in 40 Days to PMP and CUPM Exam Success. It's been really great having you as my passenger, virtual passenger, in this car talking about all things PMBOK Guide. It's been lots of fun and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did. So our final day to make it day 40 will be tomorrow. And in our final day of 40 days to PMP and CPM exam success, we're really gonna be looking at how to study effectively for the exam. I'll be sharing some nuggets with you regarding what I think you should do to achieve success on the exam. There are lots of things that one could do. 
but you want to do the most critical things, right? You also want to be aware of the pitfalls, you know, things that could cause failure. So I will be pointing you to some additional information where you can read this up, watch additional videos I have out there. And I'll also be introducing you to a best kept secret in preparing for the PMP exam. I'm talking about the Prazion 200 question mock exam, which I will make available to you at a great price for you to take this four hour mock exam, buckle down tight and ace the test after you close your gaps that you discover after going through this very challenging 200 question mock exam. So thank you once more for your audience and I look forward to speaking to you tomorrow on our final day of 40 days to PMP and CPM exam success. Come prepared though with a notepad. It's going to be a lot of stuff to write down. Bye for now. See you later.